Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video I'd like to speak with you about personal conveyance and where truckers tend to misunderstand this quirky little feature. But first, roll the intro. Welcome back. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single one of our releases that we produce weekly with the loads and talk about something that could benefit you in the trucking industry, whether you're a carrier, owner, operator, or a company driver. Uh, like for example, today we're going to be looking at personal conveyance because I know that a lot of truckers have a lot of questions about it. There's not really clear understandings. And in this video, we're going to dispel all that. I'm going to leave a bunch of uh, links that you can go and do further research if you'd like. And the uh, uh, description box below and of course as always make sure to leave your comments in a comment section below if you got any questions about personal conveyance or any one uh, of our videos go out there watch the videos uh, hopefully share them like the videos leave your comments we love having you guys on our channel so let's get started with this personal convenience where is it that people uh, tend to misunderstand it well first of all it's not personal convenience then I've heard a lot of folks call that it's personal conveyance. And what a lot of people don't know is that personal conveyance actually existed prior to ELDs. It actually existed on paper logs as long as the truck was unladen, right? So as long as you didn't have a load in that, in that trailer, you were good to go to use personal conveyance. And we'll talk about the areas that they actually are allowed to be used in. And it all starts with ELDs and what some folks remember as AOBRDs. Those started in December, 2017. A lot of folks ran AOBRDs because it gave them a little bit more flexibility on editing, updating, and making changes to the logs. And eventually they had to switch over to ELDs, uh, which are electronic logging devices and are used in industry exclusively, uh, you know, from that point on uh, to now. Now, as of May of 2018, the rules were updated where now carriers can use or truck drivers can use personal conveyance whether they're laden or unladen that was may 2018 the reason that happened was because you know oftentimes a, a trucker will go into like let's say a shipper or receiver they'll take forever then he doesn't have any hours he can't spend the night uh, at the yard he, he has to move the truck and that would basically penalize them and so the fmcsa made updates and in 2018 in may of 2018 they made it so that it's okay uh, for you to be both loaded or unloaded and use personal conveyance in those situations. Now in December of 2019, AOBRDs were canceled and everyone had to switch over to uh, ELDs, anyone who could. So a lot of the 99 and prior trucks, uh, a lot of the glider kits, stuff like that, could not use them. So they're still running on paper logs. Anyone from 2000 and forward has to use ELDs and AOBRDs would no longer be suitable. And just to clarify, personal conveyance is only available for personal reasons. Now, something that may shock you is that personal convenience, uh, conveyance, see, I'm almost making that, you know, mistake. It's not convenience, it's conveyance, it's conveyance. So personal conveyance, it's actually not a rule. It's not a law. It's actually uh, FMCSA guidance. Something else that might surprise you, and this is something that I hear all the time, is the, you know, the safe ha haven, right? So finding the nearest safe haven. There is no you know, safe haven rule. So where the safe haven portion of that actually came about was actually for hazmat guys. So they have certain safe havens that they can go to. That's the nearest safe haven, that's where they go. And it doesn't actually apply to your regular guys running non-hazmat. So that, let's make sure to clear that up. The good news is that personal conveyance does not have any uh, distance limitations. But where it gets tricky is that although there are no distance limitations, personal conveyance Conveyance says that you must find, you know, where you're going to park for the night or whatnot, whatever reason is behind you using personal conveyance. Uh, you can travel any distance, but it has to be in any direction. Now, where the problem comes in is that let's say if you need to go right, you know, because that's, you know, going right is going to be in the, in the direction of uh, where your load's going to be delivering, but there's a closer truck stop going left. So away from the delivery, you would actually have to go left and go there. The problem comes in that, okay, you drive away from where you need to go, you arrive at the truck stop and it's full so how do you prove that right so now you have to go further and further and further and so you're actually putting on more miles and and driving more while technically fatigued 
because your shift is done and you're looking for that safe haven that hey doesn't exist but you're going away from where you actually need to be going so again it has to be used towards the closest location in any direction so in other words a safe haven does not allow you to extend your uh, hours of service beyond the total amount that's allowed for you it's also not an option for you to extend your hours if you got uh, you know basically held up at a customer as far as your personal conveyance and where you can go the only time where you have to go in any direction and to the closest location is during the times when you were held up at a shipper or receiver ran out of hours and you're not allowed to stay there or you know sleep on a, by the facility or in their yard that's the only time now if you choose to go watch a movie or you want to go do some grocery shopping or some laundry you can go in any direction you want it doesn't have to be the closest location so i wanted to make sure to clear that up as well carriers are actually allowed to make these rules more stricter and this generally applies to the owner operators that they've leased on as well as the company owners or company drivers that are working for that carrier something else that folks don't often know is that a safety official huh let me do it right a safety official is allowed to tell you for example to move the truck that doesn't mean that it has to be a DOT officer, a police officer. It doesn't have to be, you know, a state representative. It could be, for example, uh, a safety official representing the truck stop that you're in, uh, a construction worker that needs you to move the truck. So again, it's going to be difficult to actually prove these particular uh, parts of the rules or the laws or the guidance that's uh, provided to them by the US DOT, FMCSA and written in the FMCSR. It's part of the regulations that you and I are expected to comply with and the safety officials, the, the police officers, the DOT officers are expected to uphold as the laws, the rules, regulations that they are. Finally, during an inspection, a DOT officer that pulls you over, does the inspection, uh, first of all, it's going to be always to their discretion, left to their discretion, and they're always looking for intent. So be prepared to actually explain these things. So that's why it's really important that you understand the law, that you understand the rules, that you understand these guidances so that you're able to clearly communicate to the police officer, to the DOT inspector that what you did is actually lawful, was done correctly. Here's my reasoning. Here's my intent. And my intent was never to break any rules, laws, or regulations. I'm simply operating by the book. And, uh, you know, here's everything. My cards are on the table. So guys, knowing this, just make sure that you're following all the rules. You're doing things correctly and that you know the actual rules. Way too many guys out there feel that it is for personal convenience. And they basically use that as an additional amount of miles that they can run, or they go out there a little bit further to closer to another truck stop or to get diesel somewhere or they you know need to go out there somewhere it is for personal reasons but it is not for personal convenience so knowing that guys if you have any further questions or maybe i've missed something please fill us in help out uh, our community uh, all the subscribers in, in our channel leave your comments in the comment section below smash that like button for us we have lots of videos coming up for you guys over the next several weeks and months would love to hear from you guys and if you have any questions whatsoever you want to get in touch with us call or text us at 801 Four four eight six three six three, or go to our website at aftdispatch.com forward slash go. Talk to you soon.